Okay, so final question of this paper now, we're um, given the diagram that shows part of a sketch of the curve y equals sine x. And we're asked to write down the coordinates of the point P. And then we're asked to write down the coordinates of the point Q. Now, in order to work this out, we have to have some understanding of exactly what this graph looks like. Uh, you need to know it off by heart, sine x and cos x. And you need to know that it always, always um, bounces up and down. It's like a wave and it keeps on going, but it bounces up and down between 1 and negative 1. So the range of the function goes between negative 1 and 1. The other thing that's important to note is that uh, y equals sine x and y equals cos x, they, uh, they start to repeat after a amount of time or after they get through so many degrees. And it starts to repeat when we get to this point here. And it repeats every 360 degrees. Now that should help us answer this problem. Hopefully you can see via the symmetry of the graph that P must be 180 degrees. So that's half a cycle. And Q is negative 1. Now what's halfway between... Uh, 180 and 360, it's got to be 270. So we should have enough to answer this question. The x coordinate is 180 and the y coordinate is 0. So we get 180 and 0, and q is going to be 200. I don't know why I wrote 277, it should be 270. It should be 270 is the um, the x and the y is negative 1. Okay, part c here, um, we're given the sketch of the curve y equals a cos bx plus c, and that goes between 0 and 360. And we're asked to find the values of a, b, and c. So essentially this is a graph transformation question, and we need to know the impact um, from looking at the graph, what, what they've done to the original function. So let's consider the original function, y equals cos x and I'm going to I'm going to put that on this diagram here. Now y equals cos x um starts to repeat um at 360. It also originates from 0 1 and will pass through a little bit like that and then back up here. So let's try and uh, attempt to get an idea of what this is going to look like. So I'm going to have a point there so I'm going to a little sketch. It's not going to be brilliant, but this is my best effort of y equals cos x. Now I need to come back up through that 270, and there we go. Uh, so at, at this moment here, it's about to start to repeat again. So let's have a little think. Um, let's start with the a. Let's work out the value of a. Now a is in front of it. Now you might know what happens when we do y equals a times the function f of x. Okay. Now normally that's a stretch. Okay. It's a stretch in the y direction by a scale factor of a. So let's have a look. The original function goes between minus 1 and 1. So essentially the 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 height of y equals cos x is 2. Let's have a look at what we've got now. It goes from minus 1 up to 3. From minus 1 up to 3. So that means it's now 4. So the, the distance here the distance is 2, and now the distance is 4. That means it must have doubled, it must have stretched um, by a scale factor of 2 in the y direction. So a must be 2. Okay, so let's get rid of that now. So we've got A. Um, let's go for B now. B is a little bit trickier. Now B is in front of the X. Okay, so it's essentially Y equals F of A times X. So what happens in this case? This is also a stretch. So this is a stretch. I shouldn't really use A, but that's normally the notation that's used. S-T-R-E-T-C-H. It's a stretch in the X direction 
by a scale factor of actually 1 over a. So it's actually, the, it's kind of the reciprocal of whatever this number is. So what's happened to our function? It's been, it's actually getting squashed in. So the original function is cosine here. We've only got one trough. And now we have one, two, three troughs. Now that means the if one trough becomes three troughs, that means it's been basically uh, squashed in by a factor of one over three. Which means that the scale factor must be three. So B has to be three. You may want to look up some videos on transformations of functions if you're a little bit unsure about that. Not that easy to, to get in the first instance, but let's move on anyway. Um, we're asked for C as well. Now, if you know this one, Y equals F of X. And then if we add something on or take it away, what's it going to do to the function? It's going to shift it up or down, depending on what this value is. So it just moves the function up and down. Now, the function um, has, well, if we doubled the function, it would have gone from 2 to negative 2. It actually now goes from 3 to negative 1. So that tells me that it's been actually shifted up by one place. So C must be one.